I will be talking about jollof rice, so I was going to start wondering if the applause is for me or for jollof. Uh, uh, I was going to keep it a secret what I was going to talk about because I figured if I did say jollof rice, people would expect to eat jollof rice. Um, and I mean, Nigerians are obsessed with jollof. Uh, we have a very huge appetite for jollof. And uh, we had a crazy idea at work uh, that uh, why not send jollof rice to space? Uh, absurd, right? Uh, so, I mean, you could think of any number of reasons why we want to do that. So, maybe we want to see how, you know, the molecular structure of jollof would change if it went to space. Or maybe we just thought it would be nice to really get jollof out there. Maybe extraterrestrial life would be interested in us after all if they tasted something great as jollof. Or, you know, maybe we just really just wanted to do it for the heck of it. Uh, but um, I'd like to tell you uh, we did it because farmers, especially smallholder farmers, are isolated. They live in spaces that are not connected to formal markets, including banks, including agricultural credit, including agricultural knowledge, including a lot of things that you know, large-scale farmers, farmers in other places have access to. So we thought to do that. And uh, um, uh, uh, I started um, uh, thinking of uh, how do we find the best rice farm in Nigeria. So uh, we, we thought, okay, let's measure groundwater circulation, let's measure a lot of things and find the best farm. And our search led us to Kano. And uh, going to Kano, we thought, okay, how do we get into a waterlogged farm, you know? So uh, we got, um, uh, Sadiq would tell you, the Bugatti for the farm. So we went in that and uh, we went into the farm. And uh, to my surprise, what we found was amazing. Uh, this farm, about 150 hectares in Ajingi, in Kano State, is actually run by nine strong women. And it's, it's, it's fascinating because women are among the isolated smallholder farmers in Nigeria and Africa, the most disadvantaged. And yet they are doing something so great and so amazing. So uh, I, I, I took time, I mean, to, to look at what they're doing, to look at them, to see really what makes their farming great and what makes their rice farm great. So back to the story. We're out to find the best rice farm in Nigeria so that we can send that rice to space, right? So we found the farm uh, using a number of metrics, but then we found also the people who grew the rice, who are amazing people, really. Uh, this is the youngest of them. Uh, Halima, she grows at least three hectares, which is massive, uh, and, uh, and, and it's, 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 it's incredible. And then uh, this is Amina, she has uh, uh, slightly more than Halima, but she's also doing great. Uh, uh, this is uh, Rabi, um, uh, this is Binta, uh, this is Aisha, this is Hawa, and uh, this is Abba. <laughs> I mean, Abba is not a woman, but here's... <laughs> Here's the, here's the thing, Abba helps these women get across because they have to actually get into a ferry to reach their waterlogged farms. He not only does that, he helps them bargain, which is the problem that I'm trying to let you see, that the jollof rice you eat probably came from you know, a number of women who grow jollof as a matter of life and death. For them, they need to grow this rice so that they'd be able to eat, so they'd be able to send their children to school, so they'd be able to do a lot of things that we take for granted. So rice is their means of livelihood. Uh, uh, this is Fatima. She doubles as a farmer, as an extension agent among these farmers. So, I mean, we know farmers uh, uh, know how to group themselves. And these women do that efficiently. Uh, this is Altine Idris. She's their head. So she probably uh, started the whole thing, the whole group of nine farmers. And uh, what I would like to tell you about uh, Halima's um, fortitude is she, uh, I mean Altine, she, she not only groups the farmers, but she makes sure that they access these things that they ordinarily wouldn't have access to. Uh, I spoke to her at length about what really bothers farmers, what's their problem, what do they need, and all of that. I mean. It's my job, I speak to farmers, and I have uh, been interacting with farmers nearly all my life. So uh, what they complain about is, you know, what we postulated. They 
are not connected to agricultural markets. Imagine if banks or markets were rooms, so the farmer has to leave wherever they are to actually physically go to a place. So if they wanted to sell rice in Abuja, they would have to either come to Abuja to find market price and go back and prepare for it, or give it to a middleman who will rip them off. So there's a need to connect them to agricultural market. And for us to find the perfect jollof, to find the perfect rice to make the perfect jollof to go to space, we needed to have helped them grow the rice we need. And that's what happens in real agricultural markets. Specifications have to work with the farmers. So you can't tell me that you close the borders, you improve you know, uh, the supply of fertilizers and seeds, and you expect everything to go right. These are people, they are growing things, so you need to connect them to real markets. For instance, I want rice to make jollof to go to space, my market specification. I don't want any type of rice. I want a specific rice grown right with the right water content, the right nutrient content, in case the aliens want to eat it, you know? A lot of other things. So I have to tell them my specifications. Now, this is the kind of thing that I hope and I envision will be done in order to bridge the gap, to make it easy for farmers, smallholder farmers, especially women, to access markets, to access possibilities and opportunities and contribute their own quota to our economy and feed us because they do it better than anybody else. So I thought, why don't we build, you know, an information system whereby farmers could get this market information and could be helped to grow to this market information. So I want five kg of rice, simple, right? And I want it to be grown for me to take it to space. So I tell these women and they get to work. They get the right extension to do it. They know what to do. They know their buyer. They know what I want and they grow to my specification. And it's beautiful what they can do. Um, now, that sort of was a moment of truth for me because then I realized, actually, since starting my company, Verdant, which works with farmers, I, I have actually found the best farmers to be women. So this woman is in Nasara and she was one of our earliest adopters and, and she uses our system to actually do amazing work and she had a rice farm and it's incredible. And then working with Oxfam, we had a few women who call themselves the Obonge women. They're amazing in Benue State and they grow incredibly well. And enabling them to grow in an environment that is, you know, technologically enabled for them to connect to markets and to knowledge does beyond what you think. And so this is really, I mean, it started from jollof rice, of course, but really I feel like uh, we need to do more for our smallholders and we need to do more for our women farmers. And that is exactly why we are sending rice to space, not just the aliens. So back to the farm now. Remember the process, we're trying to get our rice, yeah? Uh, this is what they do. They do not have a single you know, uh, mechanical equipment to help in the farm. I mean, not because it's not cool to do so, but because this is what works for them. This is what their market wants. So if I told them that my rice going to space will not be beaten on drums to be winnowed, they would definitely then work on getting something to do that, right? So I met an entrepreneur. Uh, most Nigerian entrepreneurs, especially the millionaires and billionaires, don't like being called entrepreneurs. They're businessmen. So I met a businessman. And uh, he, he told me that, oh, he just returned from Belarus trying to get a tractor plant to Nigeria. And he went on for minutes telling me how that is the problem. We do not have plants here. We do not have tractors. We do not have uh, equipment. We do not have infrastructure. But how on earth is the infrastructure going to be relevant to people like these if the market does not want what they want? If you built a road or a railroad from this farm in Ajingi, where I had to go into an ox cart that I've never been to to go to, all the way to the market, it's useless if the market does not want what the farm is growing. If you did, it, if you did an airport and it was transporting rice to Abuja, if it's not the right type of rice, it's irrelevant. So I told him that rather than bring this big plant of you know, tractors and, and combined harvesters. Why don't we work on getting the market? If China is interested in our rice, trust me, you don't need to build a road for them. You do not need to bring the tractors for them. And 
what you really want is not to just lift off a technology somewhere and just dump it on us. Like we have cultures where people, human beings, who have been growing for ages, who actually helped the economy to reach where it is today. I mean, the, the agriculture did, you know, sponsor the oil exploration and all of that. So we need to actually remember that and put that in our considerations when we're investing in agriculture. And that's exactly what I hope this project, the Jalof Rise project, will help us achieve. And uh, this was uh, the final produce. So we got this rice and um, yeah, it's fit for space now. So this paddy, all we need to do is now take it to the millers, get it to be processed, and then we go to the kitchen and cook the jollof rice, right? Uh, I hope everyone's excited to see the flight. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so by the way, we get the rice, and I go back to my um, uh, Lamborghini in the farm, and there's this boy just waiting, like, when are you going to get done so we go home? So I think he, he, he's a son of one of the laborers on the farm. And uh, so we get on. The sun was about to set, and I tell you, one of the profoundest moments of my career happened on the way back. So we're, we're, we're actually just going through the swamp. Uh, it's a different road from the one we came with. And the whole thing started sinking. Like, the cattle were getting, like, drowned. And, you know, we are next, right? And I'm thinking that, so this is how I go, like, sending the love to space. <laughs> and then the boy looks up to me and says, oh, we're getting out. And uh, two hours later, we're back on the main road. And that, for me, was uh, uplifting because it's, it's damning to think that we have a population of about 140 million and maybe more. And, uh, you know, more than 50% of that population is active in agriculture. And, you know, 90% of all the farmers are smallholders. And yet, every year, you hear amounts of about $50 billion worth of food being imported to Africa and to Nigeria, around 6 to $7 billion worth of food. Like, it's crazy, but like this boy said, we're getting out. We are getting out. And we have started. We have started to realize how to do that. And I believe that this project, this Jalof Rise project, would really show to not only Nigeria, but to the world, that our smallholder farmers can do it. They can not only provide for your typical normal jollof, but, you know, jollof fit for the angels. Because some people feel like, you know, <laughs> there are not only aliens up there, but angels. Uh, and yeah, so uh, we got out, and uh, there, there's going to be a full feature documentary about this project, uh, which was sadly put to a halt because um, one of our farmers, uh, Aisha, Aisha Umar Abdullah is her full name, four kids. Uh, I just returned from Kano last week shooting this and I got news that she passed away on Thursday. And uh, um, it's incredible because throughout the whole thing, she wasn't really talking. She was there and, you know, she, she asks things like, oh, uh, when it finally happens, would they see that we need roads? Would they see that, you know, we need to get there safer, like she asked questions like that. And I, I remember that and I was uh, uh, shocked to hear of her passing away. And uh, this is for her really. And my standing here is, is for her. And I think everybody here should should stand for her as well. And, uh, and, and I hope I hope that uh, we're able to, to finally promote her, even in her death. And, and thank you very much uh, for doing this. Uh, I hope that uh, we're able to communicate this further, not just here. So back to Jalof Rice, less dreary. We're doing this for Aisha. So there will be a cooler or a container of Jalof Rice attached as the payload to a helium balloon, which will go to space. We'll rig the payload with a camera, probably a GoPro camera, and allow it to go. And it's going to be launched in Kano, hopefully Abuja too, and Kaduna. Uh, and Kano, so, um, Abuja, sorry. So the problem now is uh, her passing away and a lot of other things came and, and we couldn't do the luncheon. But I want everybody to track uh, using the hashtag Jalof Rise on basically all the social media out there. 
and uh, in a week's time we will launch we will launch jollof rice to space i hope and i hope you see that we are not just doing it to like i said find out if you know space bacteria would come back and you know kill us all no we are trying to value smallholder farmers we are trying to show that they need to be connected to the formal markets to real time agricultural knowledge we need to enable them so that they produce more and so that we all eat better jollof and other foods thank you so much for your attention <laughs>